Hey, Dino Rizzo here. Welcome to a new series we're calling Unscripted Conversations with Dino. You know the thing I love most about ARC is that we help launch new churches and we create space for connection between existing churches. We believe in the saying, don't do ministry alone. And that is our biggest strength as a network of like-minded churches. And I get to travel around the world, talk to some of those incredible pastors and leaders. And they're serving, and they're giving their lives to the cause of Jesus Christ, making such a difference in their cities and in their communities. But we're excited to extend what we get to see and learn to you. We get real, we get raw, discussing stories of church planning, leadership, struggles, relationships, all unscripted, of course. Together, we'll witness the incredible strength and diversity as we explore different regions, churches, who all have their own culture, size, and experience. We're gonna celebrate this. We know that God is using these expressions to reach more people for the cause of Jesus Christ. So get ready to be inspired. We're so glad you're here. Hey, what's going on? We are here in the ARC studio, and I am We're so here. excited to be with my son, Dylan. I'm excited. Dylan has served, uh, he's a, a church kid, uh, and, and has always been in church, uh, and then uh, served up in New York. Yes. Uh, now on staff here at Church of the Highlands. Sweet getting, home. Getting to serve on the one team. Yes, sir. Uh, having a blast with college students. Yeah. And then I wanted to pull him in because... You know, unscripted is better when you got two Rizzos. Right. And, and we're always unscripted. Well, yeah, we are. We're so always unscripted. So I think I'm, it works. I, I'm glad to have you with me, son. I'm excited. I'm proud of you, and I'm thrilled that we could we can have these conversations together with great leaders. Amazing and, uh, leaders. You've been around great leaders. Uh, you love great leaders. You learn from great leaders. Uh, you've learned from Pastor Chris. You've learned from uh, my good Mayo Sowell, who's planted a great church. Uh, you learn from uh, Mark Pettis. I'm, I mean, Rich Wilkerson, Chad Veach. There's so many. You're always a learner. And that's been kind of the big deal with Unscripted. When we started this, this season one, we wanted to learn from some great leaders right? and from people that are just out there trying to trying to get it done, plant right. a church, pastor, help people. And, and, and you've, you've so encouraged me in this. Yeah. Well, I love it too, because I think the, the title Unscripted really describes what we're trying to do. Yeah. Like, do we do a podcast? Do we do a vlog? Do we do a video series? And it was like, hey, let's just meet with these different amazing leaders yep. in different seasons, in different cities, urban conservative, traditional, all these different cities, and let's have unscripted conversations. Yeah. And I think that's what people love these days. It's like, we see what we get on the platform. Yeah, yeah. We see what we get on the IG, on the reel, but it's like, yep. man, what if we could get 10, 20, 30 minutes of some unscripted conversation, yeah. uh, kind of some behind the scenes talking. That's, right. that's kind of what we're doing yeah. today, looking at yeah. season one and all the different guests. So this is the bonus episode. This is the bonus Episode. The unscripted episode. We love the bonus love. I love going somewhere and they, they they're gonna give you a free appetizer. Yeah. Or, you know, I the love fifth uh, the, the fifth quarter, and uh, we're all about that. Again, we're in the Arc Studio, and uh, you know, from day one from Arc, it's always been about resourcing the dream of a couple who want to plant a church. Right. And for 21 years, we've been doing our founder Billy Hornsby, of course, all the lead team. And for 21 years, we've been planting churches. We just planted 1,057. I mean, and so a lot of the people we're talking to right. have planted a church or they support or they're partnered. Many of you are going to want to be a part of that. Of course, you always check that out at arcchurches.com. But one of the things I love about the studio was when, right when COVID hit early, we're talking about March. Oh, yeah. And remember everybody, that? everybody remembers that. Remember that? Oh, man. The, the, first, the first couple of weeks. Right. Uh, world was going to end. 2020. And uh, we, so we were immediately like, we've got to communicate. Right. And uh, and I, I was in this building. This is the, this is the Billy Hornsby Center of Church Planting. Right. So we plant churches from here. I was in this building and thought, we need a studio. Right. I was standing right outside there. Yeah. So this was not always a studio. No, no. This was like a, a, a little training cafe where people would come in and we would train church planters right, right here. And so the Ark Churches, the Church of the Highlands, and gave to this so that we could have a, a place to call home. And so what was amazing is I know the Lord spoke that to my heart. Yeah. 
And um, I said, okay, I need to make phone calls. I need, you know, had a conversation with Greg Surratt and talked to Pastor Chris. And, you know, and then I said, I'm going to call David Meyer first because uh, they, they do this. Of course, Joyce Myers is right. on television everywhere yeah. on, on the when planet. When in doubt. They call the Myers. Yeah. <laughs> and, so, and they've been friends of ours from back in the Katrina days, Healing right. Place Church. So generous. On and on. It's super generous to Ark. I called David, cast the vision that I, we needed to create resources. We're going to have to train more. We're going to have to uh, do, develop cur a curriculum for, for, small, for, for small groups, for serving. So serving, it's a launch training, it's uh, coaches, it's coordinators. And he said, uh, don't make another call. We'll take care of it. Wow. And uh, I get goosebumps thinking about right. it. Right. So shout out to Joyce Meyer Ministries, David Meyer, and Hand of Hope. Shout out to the Meyer family. And shout out to the Meyer Legends. family because all of this happened because of their heart to communicate the gospel and make churches better. Right. And what they do with Hand of Hope is incredible because we're all about reaching hurting people. So thanks a lot to the Meyer family. Man, season one, we made it. We're at the bonus <laughs> episode. We're in the studio. Um, you were able to sit down with really some of our great friends, some yeah. legends, um, some some pioneers, I would say. And uh, you know, you sat down with Pastor Wayne Francis in New York. Oh, that was a blast. He's a part of the Life Church family, and one of your best friends, Pastor John Siebling, yep. and Pastor Herbert Cooper, and Brian Cromer, who just planted an incredible church, and they're really killing the game in Cincinnati. And Jimmy and Stephen, you sat down with all these guys. Um, I'm sure there was a lot of takeaways. Yeah, yeah. There were a lot of uh, probably unscripted moments. There was. What off the bat kind of jumped out to you, whether it was with Pastor John or even Pastor Herbert? I love that episode. Well, what one of the the things that we we've done with this is uh, I do not let anyone know what I'm asking. Right. It is unscripted. It's got to stay that way. It is impromptu. It right. is unplanned. I want to hear from their heart. I want to get into their soul. So we don't send them a bunch of questions. We just sit down and we go. And I had a blast with Herbert Cooper. Herbert Cooper is one of the best guys on the planet. Him and Tiffany are incredible. Amazing. People's Church, Oklahoma City. We've okay, been friends see. forever. Um, one of the greatest preaching voices. Oh man. Uh, he's Denzel. Yeah, and great kids, amazing family, uh, great family, and one. And so we start. You know, he planted a church back in the day. You know, like you know, we did. Right. The, pre there, there was no art. Pre art. There wasn't. A, there was no playbook. Yeah. Uh, there wasn't much of a, a groove to try to figure out. There wasn't even hardly even anybody to talk to. Right. And so I loved how he he was like, oh no, we we didn't do the the arc way, we did it the hard way, right? And uh, and I love some of the things he said about that. And so let's check out a part of this conversation yeah. with Herbert Cooper. We had a couple of preview services because that just seemed smart. It just seemed, it right just seemed like do. yeah, let's, it just, try it let's try let's try this out. And it was like, okay, this is all right. Yeah. And then we launched on Mother's Day Ooh. in two thousand two. Uh, with 65 people in attendance, man. And, and you'd advise everybody to launch on Mother's man, Day. Man, you just know we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> don't nobody start no church on Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Mother's hey, Day. Hey, ain't nobody coming to your church on Mother's Day. They go to their mama's church. <laughs> they go to their big mama's yeah. church. They go to their grandma's church. They ain't coming to church. your church. That is, a, that is so funny. Well, that's a, I, I love it, too, because it's, it's so many things that through years of arc and planning, things that we know now yeah. that we didn't know then. I mean, I even exactly. think about... Pastor Herbert planning on Mother's Day. Yep. Uh, I think about you know when you guys planted a church. Yeah, you Christmas. launched on a Wednesday. Yeah, a Wednesday during December. Right, which is just yeah. it, it's the things you know now versus the things you didn't know back then. And I and I think he said and, it perfectly. And thank God for pastors that can laugh about it. And, you know, Herbert is on our lead team, uh, and 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 gives tremendously to church planters, uh, and loves pastors, and is building a great church. But he went through things, right? And everybody's got to figure it out. Yeah, uh, you wish there was a, you know, a, a, a wand that you could okay, go, do great, but right, you have to figure it out. And that's what I loved about the conversation with uh, Brian Cromer. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned him, great leader, uh, great team, and they went into Cincinnati and launched a great church. Yeah, and right now, a great church, heart for missions, serving small groups. And just to hear, you know, he's just a good leader. Right. I mean, uh, and doing it right. Yeah. I, I mean, I think when 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 I even remember when he came and spent a yep. season he, in Birmingham. He was here at, at Church He of was Islands. here and, and learned. Been at Gateway? And at Gateway and, you know, with the college. And I think, you, you know, you think about a guy like Brian Cromer who really 
not only is doing well now, but but really started it well yeah. and did it the right way. Yeah. And I even remember, I think, in one of the clips from you guys' episode was he talked about when he first went into that city. He didn't yeah. go get a billboard. <laughs> you know, He didn't go uh, do a Sunday service. He went to all the other guys in the city and yeah. was like, hey, we're not in competition. Honor, God, Let's try so to do huge. something together, which yeah, I think is yeah. you know how, how you go about the process yeah, yeah. usually tells a lot about how the process yeah, yeah. will go for you. He, on, he honored the leaders, honored right. the guys that had been there. And uh, and he had a great first day. I mean, he again, he'd learned a lot from a lot of pastors and a lot of good leaders, friends with Laird, friends with Pettis, friends with uh, him and Lehman, our buddies. Right. Um, so good, good people in their life, relationship. Uh, so let's check out him describing his launch day, which is huge. I mean, it, it goes incredible. Let's check it out. I thought this was going to happen, but that happened. Yeah. What was that first... 30 days, yeah. okay, what, yeah. good, and, and a lot of it, sometimes it's so much more positive. Absolutely. But then there's a few surprises. Absolutely. What do you, what do you, prepare a church planter for yeah. what that could be like. Well, I, I had a lot of wisdom. I had a lot of incredible people that yeah. invested in me beforehand. So, you know, there's some things I felt very equipped and ready for, for that process. But then there's a lot of things where I was just advised to, to not have, have faith, but watch your expectations mm -hmm. and not. That's you know how um, big that is. And so um, one massive. of my dear friends, Jason Laird, he told me, he said, don't Shout turn Laird. around Laird. on launch Sunday until at least song two. <laughs> don't turn like, around. Just, just don't even rule. turn around. Don't even do it. Don't even, just don't. Just, just worship Jesus. Worship Jesus. Jesus. There. Cincinnati needs. Don't even Cincinnati worry about needs. who's in the room. Watch the drummer. The problem is we went up after song one. I've got song one. And so I remember Get a little going up Get there and there's people here. This is unbelievable. And then we came back up at the end. And I was like, there's so many more people here. Where did they all come from? We had 642 people. That is a massive Sunday. And to God be the glory is such an amazing that is an incredible Sunday launch. and uh, God, 642 six. well I love too it's like Cincinnati isn't the the perfect picture you dream up when you think about going to plant yeah, yeah. a church in America yeah yeah that you know yeah, he felt that and then like, was like I'm gonna go for it yeah it's like Cleveland versus everybody Cincinnati versus right. everybody Cincinnati versus the world <laughs> and you know Brian is a he's a good leader yeah he's uh humble uh, but confident, he's you know we we we're in a narcissistic world. Yeah, we all struggle with that virus, and uh, I I love that that young man. Yeah, he he he's doing it right. He's doing it right, and he's doing it for the right reason. Yeah, I mean he just loves people. When I was there, I'll never forget when I was there that day. Um, Brian was never around. I was preaching. He was never around. Right, I couldn't find him anywhere. Yeah. He's always in the foyer. In the He's foyer. outside. We we did baptisms out on, in the courtyard at, at some school, and uh, that's what it's all about. Yeah, that's a good sign. And uh, and and you just gotta love you know that heartbeat, uh, and 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 doing it right. I, and I'll tell you something else is when we had our conversations with um, Stephen Chandler and Jimmy Rollins, uh, you talking about doing something uh, different. Unscripted, very unscripted. Uh, a, a conversation everybody wants to hear. Yeah, it was one of our most watched episodes. Right, was because two guys pastoring in the same region right. area, both doing well, strong leaders. Right, great wives, great teams, and they said, "What would it be like if we could come together and um, uh, appreciate each other's strengths?" Um, uh, realize each other's weaknesses. Right. Uh, it's it's what your 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 grandfather always says. Yeah. It's amazing what can get accomplished when no one cares who gets the credit. Yeah. When I think and, and you look at both of those guys and it's it, it's not like that was a desperate move. No. One guy was struggling. No, yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah. oh, we got to make this work. It's like that was almost just a prepared move where yeah. it was like, hey, what what could we do if we came together? And we looked at, you know, what are my strengths? What are your strengths? Yeah. What are you guys yep. doing? Where are you guys killing it in outreach? Where are we struggling? And uh, I think it says a lot about them too, just as leaders. And, uh, you know, obvious as to why they're both very successful in what they're doing is because, is you know, there's a level of humility yeah. to go, you know what? I don't have to be the guy 
who gets all the credit, yeah. which I think was a, a big thing I took away. Yeah, and great. they're just, they're, yeah. they're the funniest. Yeah, it's, the, the, it's unscripted it, it was a, We had a blast. Yeah. So looking back, that was really one of yeah. my favorite episodes with you, Jimmy, and Steven. Yeah. I feel like y'all could have a show about anything. <laughs> you guys could do like a cooking show. <laughs> or, or, or they're writing books. Or maybe- You know, they have their own podcast. Right. Who's worse at golf. Yeah. You, you could oh, wow, do, yeah. really do anything. That would be me. Which would be interesting, I yeah. think. Jimmy might want to take the cake on Jimmy that one. Jimmy would take that one for sure. Um, Steven's getting game though. Steven's got game. Steven's got, got the game, got the golf physique. He's got the build. Yeah, he's got and the his, golf And he's physique. got the swag. Yeah. And filming this season <laughs> with one of your best friends, really like a uncle, father figure to he me. He is. Uncle John yeah, Seedling out of Memphis, uh, the Seed Nation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, I think it's really cool with, you know, watching, uh, you know, watching you guys growing up and all he's doing with kind yeah. of bringing other cities in and yep. bringing other leaders who have been really pastoring and running in their city for a while. And I loved even what y'all talked about in uh, on one of the clips with the episodes that you guys did yeah. was, uh, hey, what worked back then that still works today? <laughs> this was- Like this, not the complex yeah. things. What are the simple, timeless, yeah. the things that never stop yeah, working? The, yeah, and just, I, I love that moment. Yeah, let's check this out. What do you, you know. think? There's a lot, a lot of change in church planning. You, you do a thing called make room uh, whiteboard sessions. So you're dealing with church planters who planted a year ago, three years ago. Right. You're one of the great resources for art that when a guy gets a church planted, says, man, how do I do small groups? How do I do a leadership team? How do I do culture? How do I do money? We send them here uh, and to learn about you know, how to sustain growth, how to be healthy. But what do you think, I'll put you on the spot, what do you think still works? He and I both worked 25 years ago. Yeah. Prayer. Yeah. You both would love. Watch this. <laughs> I mean, Bear grills. It's just prayer. Preach the Bible. <laughs> yeah. Love people. Love people. A ton of things it are better. Better. leadership. Yeah. Exactly the same. Leadership, culture. Those are all principles that are undying. They're prayer? unending principles. Yeah. And um, you know, helping people, serving people, serving, having a serving culture, missions, outreach. These are all things that we still do that we did. We did then. We did at the beginning. And, um, you know, I mean, the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. So mm. I think we kind of reinvent, you know, and repackage. Sure, sure. We repackage ideas and repackage principles, but they are, you know, they're timeless. They're yeah. eternal principles. Yeah. I love eternal principles. If we could get a hold of that. Right. That was, that, that, that there was a touch on, on that our, our time together because John and I, uh, you know, when I look back over my life, I've had some great friends, and if I start mentioning them, but you know, it's for me, it's been Pastor John and, and Pastor Chris. Right. Those guys have been, you know, this last decade have been ride or die. Right. And uh, and both of them are good, strong leaders, uh, theologically sound. Right. Bible, 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 prayer. Uh, and as much as they lead, which I think this is important, especially for your generation, Dill, as much as they lead, they bring it back to the simplicity of know God right, and love people. Yeah. Well, I, f I feel like something I've always heard you guys say is, while over time the, mes the methods change, sure. the messaging Never. doesn't change. It can't. So while venues change yep. and online church looks different yeah. and COVID, all these things happen, Methods definitely change. Sure. You've got to pivot. You've got to change. You've got to transition. But loving people, praying, being holy, <laughs> being kind. It's like, I think even for my generation, those are the things that you have to build on. Yeah. And, and, and those are the things that in the end, that's what's cool. That's what's respected yeah. is respected. looking at guys like you, Pastor John, Pastor Chris, who uh, are in a lot of different settings, but those, those pillars, yeah. those foundations, those principles... <laughs> They don't really change. And I think that's one of the reasons why I wanted you to be a part of this is because you, you see you're young, you're, 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 you're connected with a lot so. of pastor kids, and, and you see what's happening in the world today. And sometimes I know for my generation we can look at it and get a little nervous. But at the same time, I'm full of hope Yeah, because I think there are people like you and, and, and a bunch of others who love God and want to get it right, right. want to live with integrity, don't want to compromise, want to hold the line. And again, it may be packaged different, right. but want to want to hold to God's truths, and that's what I've always loved about John. Yeah, John's been that way since I knew him when he just got out of LSU. Right, 
and fresh us. out. Yeah, and and we're we're we he and I are accountability buddies. Yeah, uh, along with Pastor Chris, and I've got uh, a couple others in my life. Phil Klein, uh, Steve Robinson uh, is is in my life like that. But um, he he and I, you know, we go one hundred percent accountability. Right. Yeah, and we we couldn't even we'd have to do a whole unscripted episode on accountability right the bonus bonus episode <laughs> that, that is the bonus <laughs> the bonus for square. your life right <laughs> if you have somebody in your life that will tell you the truth 100 percent, and 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 it is that way yeah. so so john is doing a cool thing you know he, he has a heart for launching campuses uh in a lot of different cities but it's real spirit-led right it, there it's a covenant it's a relational uh you know it, it's john Osteen used to say there has to be a divine flow We've talked a lot about that. Right. So he's, he's got to feel right. Flow, and he's got a divine flow with Wayne Francis. Yeah. And who does not love Wayne Francis? Yeah, I mean, if you if you don't have a divine flow with Wayne yeah. Francis, um, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm worried about you. Yeah, I am too. Well, and I think it's cool to see, uh, you know, talking about his vision to reach different cities. Yeah. Started in Memphis. Yep. Uh, like a lot of you guys oh, from Baton Rouge, yeah. Bethany, Christian Life, all these, yeah, you know, yeah. old school, amazing yeah. movements. Went to Memphis. And now reaching the, these other cities, yeah. but and go, almost and global. A, and global, yeah, a, a lot of, you know, in Europe and different places, yep. but almost a different model too. It is. And, and, and it fits it who he is, which right. is important to, I think we can learn from all kinds of, we do that. We, we're training launch Right, we're there's no right way. Yeah, but he he's dialed into who he is. And so I, we had a great conversation with Wayne. Uh, he's, he, he's, he planted a church in... Uh, you know, kind of north upstate. New, uh, no, 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 not upstate. White like Westchester. Yeah, up in that area. Yeah. You know that area well. You, you you ran all them streets, and so um, and and so we went over there, and we saw the new building that they're opening. Uh, it got any day now they're opening that building. Wow. And uh, and he showed me the area, and it's just so Wayne Francis. He loves those people. Right. And uh, he he and his his, his wife, uh, Classy, are just. The best, yeah. So that was a good episode, and uh, so uh, that, that's a good one to go back and watch. Right. One of the funny things, a little, little behind the scenes, we didn't we didn't have anywhere to shoot. He's, right, he's, here in New York, he pop up church. Right, I mean he's he's portable. He, he moves locations like every other week. Right, you know it it, it ain't see you at the middle school. Right. it's you know the remote life is real. <laughs> it is real, and uh, so he found a it was a, a little. Cool little cigar shop Uh-oh. upstairs. Uh, little that, humidor. Uh, yeah, that all that was going on, and so we got it early in the morning. Right. So for any before it opened, so he just said this is That's a cool amazing. place to tape, and it was. It was a good. Cool, but the funny thing is, we went a little long. Right. And uh, it's all of a sudden the bells ringing downstairs. Right. People are starting to come in. Yeah. I'm like, man, we got to get up out of right, here. Wait, right. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. And yeah. So, this is about to be really unscripted. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. And so we ended up out on the train platform. Amazing, and uh, up old, where the you know the, I don't know what train that is, but it goes on up, right? You know to to that area, and and, and uh, so it was we we laughed, we we ate good, and so we we had a lot of fun with uh, Wayne Francis. Yeah, when I love what he said in his episode because him and Classy, I mean, they've been there for mm-hmm. what fifteen long time twenty years, and I think one of the things he said, which stuck out to me, I think it's an amazing quote, is how you win as a planter as a pastor really as a leader is just to stay. Yeah. And I think it's looked probably a lot, uh, it's looked different in different seasons for him. There was on his own planning, you know, there was really no playbook back then. Yeah. And now, you know, seeing him and Pastor John yeah. get together with Life Church and now it's, you know, Life Church another New level. York. Um, I think it's a testament to just another example of, hey, there's really no right way. Um, but, you know, they've come together and, yep. you know, I think it's cool what they're doing. Yeah. Oh man, I've I've had so much fun, uh, and and I think I, you know the, my heart has always been to help people. Right. And uh, and you're gonna help me do that even more in season two. You're gonna be uh, interviewing, going be, on the road, going on the road, talking to some great leaders uh, abroad and here uh, in the great city of Birmingham. Uh, and so we're gonna have a great time. You know, one of the things that the only rate, way you're able to do stuff like this is generosity, right. And resources. And Ark is generosity. Churches are generous. I was with the church last night. Who's building on an expansion to their church? It's generosity. It's people being faithful to God, obey God, and they give. And one of those partners that I love, love, love 
is Convoy of Hope. We love them. Uh, oh, they're good. Convoy of Hope. Uh, .org is their website, yeah. and they resource churches to make a difference in their community. They respond. They're all over the world reaching children in impoverished areas, some of the hardest places in the world. They go in, supply resources, food, uh, distribute the gospel, and uh, just the hurricane that we just went through in Florida. And they were there on the ground. Right. And uh, you know all the churches we work with and all the people we've been relief, talking to. Relief, resources. Who serve, disaster relief, on and on. They are kind of the mothership that comes in with, with bigger resources. And there's so many great partners out there, and they're one of the great ones. So I want to make sure people check out Convoy of Hope yeah, because uh, they're doing a great job. Their founder, Hal Donaldson, I spent some time in an interview with him a few months ago, and we'll probably show some clips of that. Uh, I was speechless, Dylan. Yeah. I, it was like with Mother Teresa. Right. I'm like with Billy Graham. I'm, <laughs> I mean, heart for God and heart for people, and the one motive to help people right. for the cause of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So they were phenomenal, and and really, Ark is all about that. Totally, yeah. and, and and you know, shout out to them for kind of making yep. episodes like this possible, yep. this studio possible. Yeah. Um, they throw great golf tournaments. Yeah, they do, and uh, they're just amazing, generous you know, people. It's funny that we're talking about that. That. Joyce Myers has been one of their biggest supporters. Really? So we're in a studio, and they're sponsoring. It's just, it's neat how the kingdom of God is connected. Right. And I think that's one of the things we get to do. Right. We get to connect dots. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, and I think, you know, growing up kind of in this, yep. um, that, you know, that's the whole vision of ARC, right? Yep. Is, sure is. Uh, to, to believe in a couple. Yep. Um, to believe in a leader that, uh, hey, even though you're going into maybe uncharted territory, a city you've never been to that God called you to, hopefully we can come alongside you, provide resources, yep. provide finances, even something like this. At the end of the day, um, we're going to have fun conversations. We're going to have you know um, amazing interviews, but really this is a resource. Exactly. So that's what I'm really looking forward to yeah. with season two is we were very meticulous on who we were gonna bring it's on to really not just show one side of planting, yeah. one side of pastoring, but really, you, you know, we're even, we're going to film tomorrow for a guest that uh, is still a year out from even planting yeah, his church. Young, That marriage, a lot of you would know. You know, And, and I think that's one, one reason I love being on this, yeah. this series now is there's so many, you know, there's been, there's been amazing waves of church planting. Yep. And I think there's another wave there is. of, Come you know, on. guys, I'm 26, 27, 28, 30 years old, yep. where it's like, okay, now what does this look like for us? Yeah. And I think it shows, you know, what we're about at ARC is like, hey, we're not, we don't just plant one type of couple. Yep. We don't just uh, send to one type of city. It's like, you know, we're, we're here and we're, we're going to be here for the long haul. So ourchurches.com. So season two. Season two. I want to make the sure way. people uh, will share that. Share this bonus episode. Yeah, share it, friends. comment, send it out. Yeah, and then let us know what else you want to talk about other leaders. We, the, the next season, uh, I'll give you the sneak peek. It was a bucket list. Yeah. I wrote down a bucket list of people that I love and that I respect and I thank God for them. I think they're a gift to the body of Christ. And they're doing it right, right, for the right reasons. Yeah. And so we, everybody on the list, we're going to be able to talk to. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. And I think everyone on the list, you're going to want to hear from. Yeah, you know, you can learn from, and we're going to have fun. Yeah, we're so gonna. It, it's going to be amazing. Artchurches.com. If you want to get involved, if you want to know anything about planning a church or being in the family, artchurches.com. And uh, I think that wraps us up for the a wrap up. season one bonus episode. Bonus episode. We did it. Season two on the way. Two D-Rizzes. We'll see you then.